Hello everyone, welcome to another flipped video for maintaining your balance. Today we are looking at renal dialysis and comparing that to the functions of the kidney. Alright, if we uh, have a look at our dot point, we have a, uh, it's an S dot point, so we've got gather, process and analyze information from secondary sources. So the information that we're looking at today is largely pulled from a, um, a uh, renal unit on patient care, and we're going to use that to compare the process of uh, renal dialysis with the function of the kidney. Alright, uh, get into it. So, uh, what is the job of the kidney? Well, the kidney largely acts as a filter or the cleaner of the blood. It also uh, regulates uh, salts and acids in the body and it can produce some hormones. It uh, filters about 200 litres of blood every day and of that 200 litres of blood filtered it removes about 2 litres of waste uh, that we don't need from the body. It does this through a unit called a nephron and a nephron is the smallest subunit of uh, filtration that occurs in the kidney. It's not a cell, it's a series of tubes that are arranged in a particular uh, manner. Each kidney contains about a million of these and it has a glomerulus. Glomerulus is a word that uh, a lot of people get tripped up so I thought I'd introduce it now. Um, it, uh, it's pretty cool and it forces uh, filtration to occur through a semi-permeable membrane. Uh, once the wastes are removed they are sent to a tube called the ureter and the ureter goes to the bladder. Uh, the bladder's job is just to store urine. Alright, so let's have a look at renal dialysis and, and why you might need to uh, do it. So it's, it's largely done because uh, you've lost kidney function. Um, it's generally for people with uh, kidney failure and it usually occurs when they've lost about 85 to 90 percent of the ability of the kidney function, regular kidney function. Um, and if you're at this point, it's, you're probably going to be on uh, kidney dialysis for the rest of your life or until you have a kidney transplant. We've got two types of uh, renal dialysis. The first one is hemodialysis and uh, that's the one that we're going to focus on the most. And then there's another one which is peritoneal dialysis. And uh, as you can see, it's a, a little interesting. We'll get to that too. So hemodialysis is uh, probably the most common and most efficient method of dialysis. It's used largely to treat people uh, with end-stage renal, uh, renal disease. Uh, renal, the word renal, I should mention, is um, a word that is associated with uh, kidney. So if you have anything that comes up with renal, it's something to do with kidney. Um, so, it could also be used for acutely ill patients. Now, acutely ill patients might have some sort of like toxic shock in the kidneys and they, they may have poor kidney function and uh, they actually need to filter that blood. So, it's, it's a way of actually kind of cleaning the blood um, and not putting stress on the kidneys to do so. So, uh, there may be a, a bunch of different illnesses that um, uh, might require that and so hemodialysis is used just to kind of uh, uh, clean that person's uh, blood for them. Alright, so um, hemodialysis is um, generally done at what we call a, uh, a renal unit. Alright, so you go to this place, you, you know, you go about your business, and you sit in a chair and you read for a few hours. Um, you do this about three times a week, and uh, it takes about three or four hours um, in order for it to occur. And this diagram shows us that we've got, uh, you've got tubes coming from your vein, um, and they go to a hemodialysis machine and uh, that kind of I'll get to that in a bit but um, and then there's a the second part so we've got the first part which is this big machine here and then the second part which is this dialyz uh, dialyzer right here and the dialyzer is the uh, the filtering aspect of this uh, apparatus <laughs> sorry alright here's what uh, one of them looks like in the um, in real life, uh, you can see the, uh, the machine here, and then you've got the dialyzer just there. 
Alright, so it functions on a couple of principles. So the first one is that uh, diffusion um, will uh, move toxins and wastes from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration in the dialysate. The dialysate is the cl uh, fluid that uh, the blood leaks into essentially through a semi-permeable membrane. So red, pl red blood cells aren't going to leak into it, but um, the plasma -y stuff will. Alright, so then there's also uh, osmosis, not osmotion, sorry. Excess water is removed by osmosis uh, because water will move from an area of low solute concentration in the blood to an area of high concentration, which is the dialysis bath. So this dialysis is a special type of liquid that's been uh, constructed uh, pretty specifically for the purposes of um, enabling dialysis. And the last one is um, ultrafiltration, which we've already kind of um, come across in the movement of substances in phloem um, in plants. So this ultrafiltration is when you move uh, when you move substances because of a high pressure system. So if you um, the way that they achieve this here is that if you pump blood through this uh, dialyzer at high pressure and you put the dialysate that surrounds it at low pressure, you're going to have movement across that membrane into the dialysate just from a pressure aspect. So, we've got our two, two parts of hemodialysis that we want to think of. The first is that uh, the hemodialysis machine itself. Alright, so this, um, it's pretty important that your heart doesn't control the pacing of blood moving through this machine. Um, so this machine is largely designed to take over that, and it also monitors any um, uh, the conditions of the blood and uh, what that flow looks like in, throughout the machine. The dialyzer, which is where the filtering occurs, has um, t uh, has a uh, it works basically with a semi-permeable membrane. So uh, the blood that's removed from your body uh, is pumped into tiny, tiny tubules. Uh, they're called hollow fibers. And these, uh, we'll show a picture of it in a sec. Um, and uh, the water and solutes can pass across the semi-permeable membrane between the blood and the fluid. Um, and after a period, the dialysis is drained away. Now, these are tiny tubules because we know that surface area to volume ratio affects the movement of uh, the rate of diffusion. So you don't just want to have one big, you know, inch tube surrounded by, you know, a two-inch um, Thing of dialysate, uh, you want to have lots of little tubes surrounded by uh, the dialysate so that the most amount of waste uh, can get out. And so that's what this looks like here. This is essentially the uh, the nuts and bolts of it. So we've got high pressure blood coming in, and we have our semi permeable membrane allowing uh, substances to leak out, but uh, things that are important in the body, in the blood, like uh, the red blood cells and large proteins can't move out. And you've got the dialysate coming in at the opposite side. And this is kind of cool. Um, I didn't draw it up with numbers or anything, but if you, this is called a, this is a bit of a counter current flow. So um, if you think in terms of concentration gradients, even if the dialysate here has, you know, after all going through here, um, has 80% of uh, the solutes, uh, an 80% increase in the solutes that it had, well, the blood coming in has 100%, so there's still a, a, a concentration gradient that is going to allow the blood to move uh, its substances across the concentration gradient here. Um, over here, if there's not much left in the blood, because we, we're, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, so we go, you know, 100%, 80%, 60 40 20 you know, if you're at 20% over here, well, this fresh dial set is at zero, so there's still a concentration gradient. So it's pretty important that we have this counter current flow here in order to make the most effective use of the time that the blood is going through the renal dialysis machine. Alright, so we're losing uh, urea, creatine, salts, and uh, excess water through dialysis and ultrafiltration. Alright, so the second type of dialysis is peritoneal dialysis. Um, this is largely done at home, um, and it's often a, a bit of a lifestyle choice. Um, 
in the sense that uh, if you can't make it to a renal dialysis unit, uh, sorry, a renal unit where the hemodialysis is performed, um, you can do this at home and it doesn't really affect you too much. Um, the downside is that it, ha it has a slower rate of fluid solute change, so that dialysate isn't going to be nearly as uh, dirty as uh, the stuff coming out of a hemodialysis machine. So what happens is that a bag of dialysate is infused into the abdomen using a catheter. So in case you weren't aware of it, we have a lining in our body called the peritoneum, uh, and it covers our abdominal cavity. It's pretty cool. We've we've actually figured out through uh, you know just medical science that uh, we can actually fill this big sack up with liquid, um, and so. Uh, we thought, well, what if we what if we put this dialysate in here, and we just allow the natural um, semi permeable membranes of our, uh, you know, essentially our, our organs, the the peritoneal uh, semi permeable membrane, um, to diffuse the waste into it, and it worked. And so, what can happen is you get the fresh dialysate in through a catheter, uh, fills up here, gets. Um, it's dirty and then you take it away and so so long as you have a supply of this dial uh, dialysis solution the dialysate uh, you're going to be able to do this um, quite regularly at home so let's have a look at uh, the job of the kidney versus what renal dialysis does so is urine formed and uh, in the kidneys it is but uh, renal dialysis doesn't. Um, dialysate is not urine, and so dirty dialysate or uh, dialysate that carries waste is not urine. So it doesn't produce uh, urine there. What it does, though, is it does excrete waste products. That's a big tick to it. Um, regulation of electrolytes. This is essentially like salts and stuff. Um, it, it does, just to, only to a point. We don't get much reabsorption. We don't get to kind of go, oh, actually, you know what? I needed that salt. So it's not a very good salt regulator. Um, it can get rid of excess salt, yes, uh, but um, balancing that uh, the reabsorption of salt is not a strong point of uh, renal dialysis. So we've got osmoregulation, that's uh, regulating water, and yes, that does that. We do not have um, the regulation of acid-base balance. Uh, the kidney is a complex organ and it achieves this. It also achieves the synthesis, synthesis of vitamin D. And renal dialysis doesn't do that either. Uh, we have the secretion of prostaglandin, and uh, renal dialysis doesn't do that, and it doesn't auto-regulate uh, blood pressure. So, um, and it does that through hormones. We're actually going to look at that in uh, the job of the kidney a little bit later on. So, uh, is renal dialysis the answer to the artificial kidney? No but it does a pretty good job on doing the critical things like removal of waste products. All right, we, can, we, can, um, uh, we can take drugs to affect blood pressure, we can uh, take vitamin D supplements, um, we could, I'm sure there's some sort of hormone treatment here, um, but if you can't get the basics down, which is essentially regulate waste products, electrolytes and water balance, then you're going to have a uh, bit of a hard time. So uh, here is our comparison, remembering that our dot point asks us to look at the two. And uh, yeah, so 